today we're gonna be busting out this electric skateboard doing some top speed runs we're gonna see what this baby can do we're not gonna test the limits of the board itself because there's no way in hell I can get towards that like always we got the throttle let's see we got the throttle travel set to 60 so we'll be using 60% throttle for all these tests now I'm gonna suit up because uh, I'm not crazy I've already wrecked this thing once um, had some issues in the past so things we've changed to address that okay hot dogs in there put new bushings in and uh, she's uh, nice and tight Turning's not as good, but hey, gotta make some sacrifices. All right, that was 26. See if we can go 10 faster. Looks like my motor setup's working good. I really do not want to fall off. 26, 27, 28, 31, 33. Oh my god, 35. Whew. That is very, very, very nerve wracking. I'm not full throttle, I'm close to it. But if I go full throttle, it wants to throw me. 30. Oh, getting a little shaky. There's 34, 35. Oh my God. It makes me so damn nervous. Try to change my position on my feet a little bit. All right, here we go. Welcome to the shop. Today we're going to be digging into the Eskate project. I'm going to show you all the components I used in the build of this thing. So the deck is a Sector 9 lookout and it is an all bamboo deck with clear grip tape on the top. I ended up changing out the trucks. I have caliber 2 50 cal trucks. The 50 is in reference to the angle of the trucks. It's 50 degrees. Now for the motor setup, I went with um, torque boards, 6374 motors. I got two of them. I got these on a Black Friday sale and they were about $100 a piece. Now the first rendition of mounts didn't hold up. The DIYE mounts did not work. These are actually a very nice mount I got from a guy on eBay and he runs by the name of Boardnamics. This is a quarter inch aluminum. My previous mounts ended up bending here. So the wheel pulleys are actually from Hobby King, 15 millimeter belts, uh, a 15 tooth pinion, and a 36 tooth drive wheel. The ends for these uh, wheel pulleys, you basically have to buy a separate kit. It is a belt tensioner and wheel plate kit. Now this doesn't come with the belts from Hobby King, but you can purchase them from Hobby King as well. They are a direct fit. So these wheels were made by a company called ABEC 11, and they were made for the Evolve skateboards. Um, now these center hubs are the same as all the ABEC 11's flywheel edition wheels. You can get them in various sizes and durometers. This is a 107. I'm really liking this style at a 74A durometer. These are awesome wheels. And uh, with these dual 63, 64 motors, it doesn't have any lack of power at all RPM range. So the top speed um, with the Eastgate calculator is over 40 miles an hour with this setup. Not that you'll ever be able to go that fast on a board this narrow, but sounds cool on paper. All right, moving on to the front half. This is the electronics box and battery box, as well as where I have the VESCs and the uh, battery terminals end up going through. 
this is just a baking pan and it's actually a used one I stole it from my wife's cabinet and uh, the interesting thing about this is when I was drilling these holes and all that stuff for the electronics to pass through two holes in the back um, had a very pleasant odor. Smelled just like a freshly baked cake. I have all my uh, three phase wires going into the baking pan and they're held down by Christmas tree style zip ties. Basically you can drill a half hole in the deck and then press that Christmas tree zip tie in there and it is secure. It has enough room for the wires to flex for when you're turning. Now this has censored motors and the sensor wires are plugged in here and they run directly into the Maytec 50 amp VESCs. The VESCs are capable of handling 50 amp continuous as well as a 240 amp burst they say for 10 seconds. However, since these are not in direct air, I wouldn't really push them that hard. When you go wide open throttle on this thing, you're falling off. You're going to be the weak link. So, unfortunately, but um, I do know that they came out with a dual vesk system. I was looking into that, and maybe something I end up upgrading in the future. So let's get this baking pan off, and I'll show you what's under the hood. So this baking pan is held onto the deck using brass thread inserts. These are all quarter twenty fasteners. Disconnect all our wires. I have every one of them labeled. So this is my power unit right here. Um, I'll just show you the front half. This is basically a bridge connection that will bridge the two six cell batteries and convert them in series, which will bring it up to a 12S capable pack. Now these terminals right here, these are XT90s, uh, these are used to charge it and each battery have an extended balance lead so I can charge these at a balanced rate independently with two separate balance chargers. Um, that was just to simplify things and that way I don't have to have any kind of battery management. So in a nutshell that's how I did it without actually having a battery management system on board. Um, it can save some weight and simplicity when you're actually building these things, so I highly recommend that. Now, with the, all this power, um, when you're running these in series, the initial jump to this will create a huge spike which can damage your VESCs. So I have what's called an anti-spark connector. And um, inside here, I just ended up soldering a piece of copper wire from one end to the other. Basically, the real tough grade... Um, I believe it's called Romex cable wire. Just ended up cutting a little section out and soldering it in there. So this has a resistor in the first half and when you immediately connect it, it doesn't induce a spark because the resistor actually takes that up and it heats up. But you have to make sure you plug it in. But uh, this will protect your VESCs on that initial power up. So um, this masking tape, I know it looks kind of crappy, but this is basically just to hold all my wires in place while I am bolting this half to the deck. It's not waterproof. Um, that will probably be in the next version. Here's our electronics cake we're making right here. We've got two Zippy uh, 45C 5000 milliamp hour batteries. These are capable of producing a ton of amperage. And um, I've got each battery running to these XT90 uh, Y junction that I hardwired and soldered together using the same uh, copper ends as a Romex and ended up just soldering them in a configuration. I'll post a uh, schematic in the description if you want to figure out how exactly to wire them. I did it this way just to basically make it a hard copy and as compact as possible. This over here is my receiver. This is basically a Spectrum RC car receiver. The VESCs, I've got one in this corner and one underneath here. Now, the way I run this is I have my sensor lead cables that came with the VESCs, and they match up directly to my torque board's motor, so that connection's done. Now, the thing is, you can run these individually and independently on two different channels. The way that I have them set up is you can run one as a master and one as a slave. Now, the way you can do that is you have to buy a JST connector, and the terminal type is a mini JST 2.0 PH. 
And the way that works is you only have to hook up the receiver to one VESC and that will send the commands to the secondary VESC. Now, the first issue I had with this thing, um, obviously it's extremely fast. But I was going down the road full throttle. I go to let off and the board just kept on going and I know it'll go well over you know mid 30s. I don't remember if I fell off or if I bailed but it all happened so quick I ended up wrecking it. Well um, I did the test again and found out that it was happening um, by just laying down on the board. I went full throttle and it just kept going for like literally two seconds before it goes into the fail safe and uh, it's a very scary thing to do and what I found was the receiver was dying on me from lack of voltage when the voltage would drop. So the way I went about that to fix it is I've got this YEP 20 amp SBEC. Now this converts uh, full 12S down to five volts. So I have that wired into my Y series connection in the front here. Now I haven't had any issues with it since I've installed that. So that is definitely a must if you're, if you're planning on building something, especially something this fast. That's pretty much it for the electronics on this thing. It's dead simple. Just batteries, controllers, and uh, wires, really. So let's get it back together. Basically, this is a DX3C. It's definitely not really needed. Um, it's a pistol grip. I prefer them because in the RC stuff, I'm very used to it. Um, you give it a little bit of gas, the wheels will power up. You got brakes. You get regen braking out of it. You have what they call traction control, but it's basically if the left's not spinning, the right won't spin. The main thing I wanted to uh, focus on is I changed out the bushings in these trucks here. I actually hopped on the website of, for uh, Venom Skateboards and I picked up some 97 durometer green bushings. I put them on the bottom since that's the load bearing bushing and that helped out tremendously um, as far as top speed stability. really happy with the whole setup now I think I'm pretty much done with it for now just gonna enjoy it I'm gonna ride back in the parks really get a lot of use out of it I planned on using this for doing some filming maybe uh, somebody wants to bring their car down we can do some rolling burnout shots and just get in there with the gimbal and the uh, little GoPro and just chase them down the road while they're doing a rolling burnout I think that would be really cool so we'll get some cool footage with this unit yeah we'll have fun with it all right I appreciate you guys watching and uh, we'll see you next time I'm gonna take my skateboard down this path I'm gonna ride till I bust my ass